Welcome, protege. We're going to wrap up our conditional statements with switch statements. To recall, these are used to control the flow of a program based on a variable or input from the outside world. For example, say we have a microcontroller and we're reading in eight one-bit values from a dip switch package. The position of each switch will determine which piece of code our program will execute. So if our switches are set to say 55 in hex, then we'll run the case for that specific input value. I already created a script called switch statements and I already set up the boilerplate code. We're going to show you two examples. The first example is just a simple switch example just to show you the basic syntax. Similar to the previous tutorial, we're going to create a row vector and then we're going to iterate through each element in that vector and run the corresponding case for that particular element. First I'm going to create a variable x and set that equal to 0 and then we can set up our switch statement to read in that x value and then run the case based on that input value. And I'm going to set up four different cases and when we go inside of each case we'll just display the x value and then say hello from that case. So if we go into case 0 we'll just say hello from case 0. And I also want to convert this decimal value to a hex value and then display it in the command window. This function deck to hex returns a, a character for us so we don't have to pass y into a num to string function that we did in the previous tutorials. And I'm going to copy and paste this case since our other cases will be similar. And then just change the number of the case and part of the string. And like I always say, don't forget to add the end to your end of your switch statement. Okay, this is complete, so let's go ahead and run that. X is zero. So we pass that into our switch statement and we execute case zero. And we get hello from case zero, x equals zero. Let's change this to x equals one. Make sure we go into our case one. So we get hello from case one. Let's change this to two. We get hello from case two. And finally, let's make sure case three is working. And yep, we get hello from case three. That's it for our simple example, so let's move down to our row vector example. I'm going to use a for loop to iterate through each element in the row vector. And then pass in m of i into our switch statement. For example, if we start at i equals 1, we'll index into element m of 1 and then we'll run the corresponding cases for that. I also need to create, actually create this row vector. And this will be a 1 by 15 row vector with values ranging from 0 to 15. And since, since we have 16 possible values that our element can be, we need to create 16 different cases to be able to handle each input. I'm going to copy and paste the code from our previous example and then build off of that. And before I copy and paste this three more times, I'm going to change this because we have to pass in m of i and change this to m. Now I'm going to copy and paste this and paste it three more times to create our 16 case statements. And then don't forget to change the number for your case.
Okay, we have our 16 case statements set up, and don't forget to add your ending statements. I'm going to comment this simple example out first. And now let's run the code. Oops, I forgot to change the string here. Let me do that real quick. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and run this. For the first input, our value is 2. So we go into case 2 to run that code. Our next value is 15 and we go into case 15 to run that value so forth and so on until we get to the end of the row vector and the last element is 7 and yep we we end at case 7 but what happens if we have an input value but we didn't create a case statement to be able to handle that input value and to show you that example I'm just going to change our range just 16 to say 25 and we now have a switch statement where we won't be able to handle any any of those elements since our case value is rolling from 0 to 15 but our range is now 16 to 25 so let's run that we don't go inside any of the case statements since we didn't handle those So you have to be careful and make sure you have a case statement for every possible input value that that you could potentially see. For a quick recap, we showed you a simple example first. This was just to show you the syntax and show you how we run the code within each case statement depending on the input value. Then we created a row vector we iterated through each element we created a a case for each value that the input could be at first we had our range from 0 to 15 so we created 16 case statements and then we changed our row vector to be in the range from 16 to 25 which we didn't create cases for so we did not get any input out on the screen that's it for this tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe below or leave a question or comment